looking at terminal crimpers now, uh, we have a couple different choices and that's mostly determined by the type of connector you get. So we have these ones here, they're the open style terminals. So this is a socket for a Deutz connector and it's an open style. You can see that it's, it almost looks like the same as a weather pack. If you've done weather packs, those are also open style crimps. And then we have closed style crimps. And we'll take a look at what those look like right here. These closed styles are a full barrel, but they require a different crimper. So these are the, as close to a Deutz brand set of pliers as you can get, the DT series, HDT Deutz pliers. These guys are about $600 for a pair of crimpers. Uh, this whole kit that I got here, it's got extractors up in the top row. It's got these closed barrel crimpers and open barrel, open terminal crimpers was all $180. So uh, value wise, you've got to do a lot of closed barrel crimpers and to be able to notice the difference over the long term to make a pair of pliers like this worth it. Uh, what is nice about these is they're all internally indexable. So you can be from 12 gauge wire all the way to a 26 gauge wire by simply pulling it and adjusting it. And it changes the depth that your crimping fingers go in, the indentations right there. And then you also have a depth stop on the backside to make sure that your crimp actually lives in the middle of the barrel that you're crimping. So that's a good value for those expensive crimpers. Otherwise, these closed barrel ones, you don't even have to buy the whole set. Most of us are only gonna use the 14, 16, and 18 gauge pair, and they have a depth stop right here. They do have the four pins, and they do have an adjuster on the side. It's just not quite as fancy, but these iWIS ones uh, are gonna work just fine and we're going to use these ones uh, just so that we show that you don't need the most expensive tools to still do a good job. So we're gonna go back and use these same wire we've been using for all the other videos. This poor wire has got way more splices than it should actually have, but that's fine. We're gonna strip it back. Now, when you do these type of crimpers, whether it's an open style or closed, the amount you strip off is going to be different. So we're gonna do the closed barrel first, and I use the barrel itself to actually gauge how much to strip off. So put the wire beside the barrel until we see it goes from silver to gold. And just before, right at that hole, that's the inspection hole to make sure you actually ran the wire in far enough. So we're gonna strip to that point. And we don't need to do anything with the wires at this point. Sometimes uh, when they're really close, uh, if you're using 14 gauge pins on 14 gauge wire and 16 on 16, as you should, sometimes they can be really, really tight to get in there. And if you twist the wire, they don't fit as well. But what we're hoping to have happen is that when we install this receptacle or this socket onto the wire, we can see the bare wire through our inspection hole that I can see there but also that my barrel lines right up with the insulation. That's gonna make it the strongest when you go to push this connector through the rubber seals on the back of the Deutz connector. So at this point, we can just grab our crimpers, run them in, we can see that the depth is actually okay right out of the box. The copper or the gold line sits flush with that, the black surface of the pliers, and we just give it a squeeze. And what, you'll know you've gone all the way when the pliers relax. So if we go halfway, the pliers hold themselves closed. When we go all the way in, the pliers reset. So now we have a four pin Deutz closed type connector. When I've tested these for pull strength, these closed barrel style are up in the 60 to 65 pounds of pull strength before they'll fail. And when we go to this open barrel style, they fail generally in the 15 to 20 pound. Now, both of them work because you really only need about a 10 pound pull. Uh, even the standard from SAE doesn't require any more than 10 pounds. Now, when you do these ones, I stripped the same amount we did on the last closed barrel. And what you'll notice is that when I stick this all the way in, this band right here is crimping insulation and that's not good. So, 
it needs to actually be crimping onto bare wire and the, neat, the pins should go all the way in to this socket. So what we need to do is actually strip more from this wire to make this guy work better. So we want to be just inside the barrel so it's a closed fit in there. Lay that over like this and now I will pull about double the insulation off. Just something to keep in mind as you're cutting wires to make sure that you have enough insulation. Now on these open style, I do like to put a little bit of a twist on them and that holds that wire together to make sure that when we crimp it, we don't have any other issues. And now you'll see that when I've put that wire in, the first wide band that we crimp into the wire is fully in contact with the copper. That's what we're looking for. And then the other side is gonna be sitting on the insulation. If you were doing weather pack open style, you would have actually put a rubber seal right there. But since this is a Deutz, we do not need that rubber seal. At this point, we can look at a couple different models. I bought the one in the kit, and then I wanted to put more in the toolboxes so we had more than one set going on. But these have a stripper built into them as well, and these were about $30, $35 on Amazon. So, uh, and so we can see the wire gauge size. We're working with 1614, so we can go there. I often go one size smaller. Uh, but let's take a look and we'll go 14, 16 right there. So at that, at this point, what we want to do is we actually want those tin fingers to roll in and pinch. And so if you're choosing what side of the crimper to put to crimp on, what you want to see is that there's a semicircle on this side, sort of a half round. That goes on the back side of the terminal right here. And you're fingers that you're going to be crimping down, these little tabs, they sit in this dented section of the crimper. And so we'll see what it looks like once we get this all crimped down. You'll see that it rolls them in, and then you give it a squeeze. And I do like to go one size down. I find that it gives them a much more or much more solid grip. That way we see that this little, the, the tabs did roll in. There's no stray wires sticking out. Everything is caught the way it should. And then we can go one size up to catch our insulation. Sometimes we can just use the seal one. There we go. I want to go a little bit more, a little more grab on that. There we go. And so now we see that we have grabbed the insulation and we have grabbed the copper wire and this connector would be ready to go into our Deutz plug. Let's continue on just doing one of these open barrel style connectors for a weather pack so we can see the difference with these fingers and the crimping tab. Much in the same way we did those Deutz open barrel style, we are going to strip back the wire. To get our gauge, again, we wanna push this wire in this is a hollow sleeve in there. We want to push the wire in past that. So we want to strip all the way back, but not all the way past these fingers. So right at this band right there, that should be good. So that would work just like that. Now with these weather pack, each seal or at each weather pack wire has its own seal on it. So we have to install that seal. Often it's easy. Well, it's not so hard to just do it now, but you can do it before you strip or after. It doesn't really matter. But now what you'll see is that the rubber seal goes right to the end of the insulation. I can now take the terminal, put it on there, put those bands right where the rubber would be. And now that's the seal position on these crimpers. So sometimes I like to do it this way, which is the wrong way first. I know it's the wrong way, but, but it seats the seal inside the crimper. And then I flip the crimpers around. And now you just have to get those tabs fold in just a little bit to get them started. Some pliers need a little bit more help than others. Let's we'll go here and we'll crimp one size down again after we're done. There we go. So now what we can see is that our insulation has been crimped with our seal, but we still don't have our electrical connectors. So now we're gonna do the electrical connector, still 14, 16, and we're gonna flip around. Remember, we roll those fingers in. 
There we go. And I like to go one size down to make sure it's got a good bite. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're working on these weather pack pins is that you don't want to push this little tab in. You don't want to crush it and you don't want to crush these fingers because your plastic body of your connector sits between these two places. And so if you crush this or this, what you'll find is this pin wants to move around more. You do have a retainer on the backside holding the seal in place, that's true. But you want to make sure that when you're making those connections from the plug to the receptacle, that these pins and sockets don't move away from each other. So that's how you would build this open barrel style crimp using these individual seals, crimping it properly on the conductor so that you don't have any stray wires and leaving it so that it would fit properly into the plug. All right, let's talk about assembly and disassembly now that they've been crimped and put into their plugs. These techniques are the same as you'd use two, three, four, however many connector or pin and socket connector you're using. Uh, if they are these small two and three pin connectors, usually you can just pull the locks off the top or out of the center here, there's a small green tab in there that holds the fingers down. And this kit comes with a screwdriver like this that's notched. Uh, you can just buy these as well. They're the retaining or secondary lock removers. So you actually stick them in there. There's a little box down that I'm gonna reach into right down there. Give it a half twist. And then you can actually just pop that lock right out of there. And what we were hooking into was the box going down and just getting it to reach in and grab that piece. If you don't do that, you're sticking a seal pick in there and trying to reef it out. And you either stab yourself or damage the connector. So if you have a larger connector, let's say like a 30 pin or 70 pin or 120 pin connector, and you're dealing with a Deutz style, what you can get are these extractors. This one's metal. You can also get them in plastic. They're commonly plastic, but this kit did come with the metal ones. And they are a tube with a small relief there. And what you can do is spray a little electrical contact cleaner on them and you can fit them and slide them up. You want to choose the one that just barely fits over the conductor, like over your wire and insulation. And you want to slide it up in there. And you want to keep in mind that the tabs in these locks are going to be holding in from one direction. And if you don't know what that direction is, you can always just stick them in, give them a gentle like quarter turn. That's all you'll need. The reliefs will come out. And then what you can do is just pull the entire pin and socket with it. So this rubber seal that came, that's okay. That can be pushed right back into place like that. And it's good to go. And now we have our extracted socket for our Deutz. This will work for both the sockets as well as the pins in the Deutz style. When we look at the weather pack, let's do the same thing. You can get different versions of this barrel type extractor. You can get that ring where there's all the multi pins. That's actually a very good tool to have because there's lots of other locks that you need to hook in to reduce or remove the retaining lock. But what we're going to do with this one, it's got a barrel. We're going to slide it over top of the pin and it's going to push in the fingers that are holding that connector in place. And so I'm just going to show an example again of what was happening. This was going in place and pushing in or pulling in those tabs. And now we're able to pull this connector out of the plastic body because these finger tabs have been compressed. And essentially that's what you're doing no matter what on all these quick connects is you're releasing these lock tabs. And then sometimes when you get them out, the lock tabs have folded in. So you can just go ahead with a seal pick, pop them back out. So they stick out like they have wings again. And we would be able to stick this right back in the hole after we did that. And mechanically it's going to be held again. Push this in, release those tabs, and you'll see those fingers have folded in. Now we can only do this so many times before we work harden these tabs and they break off. And at that point you have to replace the pinner socket. 